Hi, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. May all that I say and all the chizik that we gain bring nachad ruach to Hashem barach, serve as a schut for Klal Yisrael, and invoke rachamei shemayim for all those of ne in need of Yeshuot and Nechamot. Amen. So tonight, Bezrat Hashem, we're going to gain some chizik together and work together on how we can find Hashem and through the process, Bezrat Hashem, of finding Hashem, be motivated to also uncover and discover the great me. Every single one of us has an amazing, great me hiding behind curtain number one. And the only way that we can find who we truly are is if we clean out the basement and let out the gook, give it a nice flushing, and then we will discover who we really are. And that's the process of the month. The process of the month is that during this month, the light of what's called Or Atika Kadisha, the ancient light, the light, the first beginning light of creation shines in full force to every single one of us. In other words, there are no disguises this month. Everything is rachamim, gilui panim. What we see is what we get. In fact, Chazal teach us that if during this month, chas v'shalom, there's discovered some sort of deen, something bad, so to speak, happens, we're in trouble. We're in trouble because this is a month shekulo et ratzon. From the beginning till the end, it's one big et ratzon. It's total face-to-face, heart-to-heart, beloved-to-beloved relationship. This month, one tear is worth all the tears of the entire month, of the entire year. Rav Yecheska Levenstein Zatzal says that during this month, taking one mitzvah, pumping it with a new life, new injection. I found myself the other day saying, Asher Yatsar, I closed my eyes and I pictured green coats and people lying in hospital beds. I pictured a sheet with the words Hadassah or Sharet Tzedek or one of the names. And I thought to myself, I can stand here and I could say the bracha and I could control my movements. I could choose to do whatever I want right now. But yet some don't have that choice. And even me, that I have a chronic illness called MS that I live with every day, I guess that enables me to sharpen my awareness of the privilege to be able to use my two feet, to be able to swallow properly, to be able to think properly, to be able to see properly, everything that the neurological, the neurological system it, it, um, causes the body to function, that's what's disturbed in the MS chronic disease. What an appreciation, but even me, that ha I have these real, even me, I can lose it and lose appreciation. So inject one mitzvah once a day for the rest of Elul leading to Yom Kippur with some new life, something new, something you didn't do before, nothing big, nothing grandiose. We don't have to go all climbing up the Everest. We can do just something small to inject the new life. Because what do we ask for on Rosh Hashanah? We say, Ten lanu chayim. Give us life. What's life? What is life? What are we asking for? Life in this world? Okay. Some people's lives are lives in hell. We're not asking for that. Life means attach me to zest, to enthusiasm, to ruts on to live. So I get up in the morning and I feel connected to life. I'm injected and infused with the ruts on to live every moment to its fullest. That's what we ask for, to be connected to the source of the, the giver of life. That's what we want. That's what we truly want. We want to live life alive. 
being alive, being awake, not being asleep. I want to be able to live and recognize what life is telling me. I want to hear Hashem's messages. I want to make sure that I'm leaving a stand when I leave this world after 120. I want to make sure that I've done what I was supposed to do. I want to live life with purpose. I want to fulfill my potential. I want to discover the great me that's hiding behind the challenges that I didn't yet discover. There's a great me, a great you and you and us in every challenge, in every hardship, in every difficulty. Hashem says, come on. I know, I know you jumped three meters last time, but come on. I'm taking out those pom-poms. Come on, you could do it. You could do it. I'm hiding behind the, 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 the gate, but I'm looking at you. I know you could do it, right? That's that ath the athlete, the coach relationship. Come on, I know you could do it. And then you go ahead and you jump and you look back. Was that really me? Did I? I really did that. That's amazing. That's the you that you wouldn't have discovered if you hadn't gone through the challenge. That's the you that Hashem wants each and every one of us to discover by accepting and embracing by hugging our reality, accepting the difficulties, and saying, you know what, there's good here. Because in essence, the avoda of Elul, the avoda of the 10 days leading up to Yom Kippur, is one and one only. An avoda of increasing and fortifying, cultivating the amuna that we already have, but strengthening it. Why? All of Rosh Hashanah, all we do is ask and recite what's called zichronot and malchuyot. We say to Hashem, we want you to be our king, reign over the entire universe. Call pa'ul yidasha ta pelto. Call yitzu yidasha ta yitzelto. Everyone will know where they came from, who gives them life, who runs the show. But if I'm not happy with my life, if I have complaints, frustrations, anger, temper tantrums, hmm, sadness, depression, all the negative stuff that seem to embrace us every moment of our lives, what am I saying to Hashem? You know what? If you invited me up to Shemayim for just, just, just like a little one-on-one cons on one consultation, I prop Hashem, I don't charge too much. I can give you some tidbits What's really going down, going on down here in this world, maybe you, you're missing something up, I don't know, maybe because you're so far, maybe you don't actually see what's going on over here. Maybe I can help you out. That's in essence what we're saying. That's in essence the testimony that we give to HaKadosh Baruch Hu every time we're negative. Now, we're not angels. I don't have any wings in my closet. I don't know about any of you. But that's where we strive to live towards. We strive to live a life of Amuna. What is a life of Amuna? Meaning that my reaction, my response, my interaction with my surroundings, with, my pe with the people in my family, my spouse, my children, my neighbors, my in-laws, myself, whoever I interact with and whatever I interact with, I respond with a keen awareness knowing as Rebetzin Abramo beautifully said, and od milvado. Now, if I see in front of me the difficult situation and I allow negativity to permeate my life, then I have created an existence that's in essence an illusion, and that's called yesh od milvado. Because if there's something else that's annoying me, angering me, causing me unnecessary anxiety because, you know, if I had a husband who would really know how to help out in the house, well, let me tell you, I would not be so angry. You know what? If I had a child who would know how to listen to me after one time, I did speak nicely one time. You know, I don't have to scream. I mean, I know how to speak nicely. I was taught that, you know, from the moment I was a child. So you made me scream. Then you know what? I would be okay. But Hashem gave us that spouse, that child, that annoying neighbor who 
What happened to them at 12 o'clock at night decides to move and change the house? I don't understand. They couldn't do this at, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning like all the rest of the world. Hashem gave it. And od milvado means there's no one else. There is no annoying anything. There's no a fly I'm shooing. There's nothing else. And if I get annoyed or moved by any other reality, I have taken myself essentially out of Gan Eden, because what is Gan Eden? Face-to-face, one-on-one reality. That is the place we need to return to on Rosh Hashanah. That is the, the tikkun olam. That is where every single one of us needs to strive to be once again, face-to-face, one-on-one, personal relationship with Hashem. No distractions. And so Elo is a matana. It's a big schut. Hashem says, I'm going to shower you with no filterizations all year long. There's filterizations. There's ten spheras. I've got, I can't shine all that light on you all day, all night. It's going to burn some of us because it's too much. You know, like people who win the lotto, sometimes it's too much, right? They lose it all. They go crazy. We see that. An abundance has also its, its downfalls. Shem says, listen, i got to give it to you gradually. I have to have a vessel to catch it. Got to build that vessel. It's got to be strong. Build up your amuna. See me more and more every day in your life. And then I will be able to interact with you more and more personally. And so this is the matana. This is the gift of Elul. In Elul, Hashem says, work on cleaning yourself. I will help you. Anila Dodi, I'm going to help you. But you start the process, and then I will help you. And then, you know what you're going to discover? That all along you were looking at your life and you kept saying, it's really dark in this house. I don't know what's going on in the house. Do we need to change the light bulbs? What's going on? My world is becoming darker. And Elo gives us an amazing gift. Take off your glasses, clean them off, and you'll realize that it was the glasses that was darkening your life. It's the way that you see things. When we break away from all the gook, all the facade, all the nothingness of the world, we suddenly discover Hashem has been all the time here for me. Hashem has been giving me good. Hashem really does love and yearn. Where does Hashem meet us this month? Hashem meets us in the field. The field describes a place of work. When you're in the field, you're in your dark, you know, dirty jeans, you've got, you know, your t-shirt, you've your, your, your sleeves are up to your elbows, you're sweating, you're not looking what's going on, you just want your water and you want to be done with it, go in the house and wash yourself up. Hashem says, that's where I'm going to meet you. When you're all dirty, when you're working, when you're moving towards tikkun olam, that's where I want to meet you. That's the meeting point between us and a Kaddish Baruch Hu every single day of our lives. But in Elul, we don't have to wait. He's here. We don't have to work so hard. He's coming and meeting us in between. And that is the gift of this month. This month, we go back to the Amuna basics. One, it's all from Hashem. Remembering that everything I went through, everything I'm going through, and everything I will be going through is all from Hashem. Number two, not only is it all from Hashem, but Hashem is just. Hashem is fair. Hashem is down to the minute detail of my life has been exactly planned. Those buttons that are being pushed at me day in, day out are perfect for me. Hashem says, oh, I got you there. You're reacting. Great. Great. That's where your goodness lies. That's where you have to start working. Come on, come on. Get to work. I got your attention. And we're trying to run away from it. But that's where the coach says, come on. You could do it. You can, you can jump a little bit higher. I know you could do it. You'll discover an amazing you. And Hashem waits for that aha moment. Aha, now I know. I never thought I could ever do such a thing. That's amazing. Good 
job. Wow. Come on, come on. Maureen, do you really? You surprised? You, 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 just, you shocked me here. Good for you. That's what Hashem wants from us. Hashem says, you don't have to be that impulsive, animalistic, impulsive you that wants to respond when someone gets to you. No, I know that that could be your natural tendency. No, 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 no. I want you to discover that godly spark inside of you and be able to tame that animal that's inside of you in that cage that's just waiting to roar at the first sign of an annoyance, a difficulty, a hardship, a scream, an inner voice saying to you, but why? Why me? After 40 days of nishmat, after saying to him every day, after being mavater, after deciding to increase my tzniyas, this is what I get? Hashem says, no. Don't ask questions. Don't ask lama. Ask lema. Don't ask why. Ask for what. What do I do now? Don't ask why did this happen. We ask for what purpose. What do I do now? What's my next step? This is the month where we can now say, it's all from you. Everything's just. And not only that, it's all for my ultimate good. In essence, what we do this month is we work on doing yichud with Hashem, becoming one and merging one with, with Hashem. With what, what, in, what do we merge with with Hashem? With Hashem's will. Hashem's desire in creating this world was to give every single one of us oneg. Oneg is ultimate pleasure, pleasure that we haven't even begun to taste. The most sweetest moment of your life is not a drip drop of the ultimate good that Hashem is all day, all, all night. Lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael. Hashem doesn't sleep for one. When you go to sleep and you've forgotten about the checks, that may not be covered in tomorrow's bank account. When you go to sleep and forget about the people sitting in the hospital, when you go to sleep and forget how sad or how insulted someone might have been by something that you, Hashem doesn't sleep. Hashem continues to worry. Hashem continues to remedy. Hashem continues to repair and bring us closer to the ultimate redemption. It's all good. It's all from one source to give us good. Hashem is constantly pouring down good. Hashem only is hatov v'hametiv. That's it. Either it's good or it's for the good. Either it's good revealed. I see it now. Rabbi Nachman Zechat uh, Tzadik Levracha says, there's either hidden good or revealed good. That's it. That's all that there is. There's no bad. Bad, evil, is not a creation. Evil, darkness, confusion, yusurim, is the absence of good. It's not an entity of its own. It's not an independent creation, just like machala, a person's illness. It's, Hashem didn't create illness. The only illness that was created and intended from the get-go is tzara'at, for lashonara. All, everything else is a result due to cause and effect relationship. We did it to ourselves, maybe not in this life, but in the past life. Something we did cause for a lack of light to shine on whatever area or part body or mind and caused it to have what's called a halal. Mahala and halal share the same root. What is halal? Mahala means an illness. What is halal? Emptiness, a void. How, how is a void connected to the word mahala, to an illness? Because an illness only means that there's some place in the body that is lacking divine injection of light. That's what it means. There's, there's a hole there. There's a black hole that has not been injected with holy divine healing light. 
And the Zohar Kadosh says that when a part of the body is not shining with divine light, it withers, dries up, and dies. So when there's a part of the body that's chole, that's with a mahala, what we need to do is inject it with divine light, emuna. At the end of the day, everything comes back to emuna. Total, absolute surrendering of logical mind to the idea that Hashem runs the world. I live with a keen awareness that I trust that everything that Hashem is doing is either tov or metiv. It's either good now. There's two levels. There's a level of Rabbi Akiva, and there's a level of gam ish, uh, ish ga, nachum ish gamzu, of, of, of understanding that this is good right now, or Rabbi Akiva that says, kol man de'avid tav la'avid. Everything is for the best. In other words, it will be. It's for the ultimate best. It may not be good now, but somehow or another, it's serving an ultimate good. That's all there is. And the problem with us is, let's go back to the idea of Hashem constantly wanting to pour onto us only good. How do I get this good? How do we enjoy this wonderful good, this ultimate delight that Hashem so eternally, so intensely wants us to enjoy. How do we benefit from this light? So the Svar Makadoshim teach us it all goes according to a person's ratzon. According to a person's ratzon, his ultimate, true, genuine desire to want to attach himself to the giver of it all, if we are perfectly aligned with Ratzon Hashem, we will perfectly receive everything in its revealed state and ultimate good. The problem is, is that we sometimes, many times, want to receive for our own benefit. Our ego gets in the middle of the way. You know, I do want money because I'd love to be able to give tzedakah. I mean, I hate getting from other people, I want to be the giver, but uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, kind of changing a couple of things in my house, just so, you know, for my own good. Again, nothing wrong in enjoying life. But when we start to want to, to have things, enjoy the brachas for our own good, that's where they become static in the pipeline. That's when the goodness that Hashem pours down to us is not quite received in the manner by which it was intended. And you see this very clearly when you look at the word ratzon. Ratzon, you spell it resh tzadik vav nun. If you switch the, word, the letters of the word ratzon around, you get the word tzinor. Tzinor is a pipeline. Depending on one's ratzon, Depending on whether our pipeline is exactly aligned to mirror, what does it say? We are supposed to mirror and emulate Hashem's ways. Unconditional giving, immense, infinite patience, unbelievable love and care no matter what anyone does to us. Yes, honey, I'll bring you that cup of coffee even though you really didn't deserve it. But I will do it with a smile unconditionally emulating, being a mirror of Hashem's godly attributes, taming that lion that wants so badly to come out and show its face. When we do that, we become a proper tzinor through that ratzon to attach ourselves to the goodness and for the purpose for that which Hashem intended to give the blessings in our lives. Hashem didn't intend to give anyone a lot of money to just keep it for themselves. Hashem didn't intend to give us amazing children so we can show them off and make someone else feel horrible, and so on and so forth. Hashem intended to give us brachas and give us goodness and give us oneg so that we can use it. Oh, my toolbox, let's see, I'll open it up today and I'll, oh, I, today I have a wrench. Okay, Hashem, thank you. I have, okay, this type of nail and I have ply. 
I know what I need to do with the tools that Hashem gave me. Whatever Hashem gives me, I need to use it for the betterment of myself and for those around me. And when I do, I'm properly aligned and attached. And I will receive the goodness from Hashem in its proper format and alignment. Oneg, which is what Hashem pours down this tzinor according to our ratzon, is what we said, ultimate delight. But what happens if I take this oneg if I take this delight, and again, I use it for myself, or my intentions in getting this delight is not 100% godly, you know, again, kind of want to use a little bit of my own. All right, 10% I'll give to Maser, but, you know, 90% I can do whatever I want, right? I could do, I can go, I can go to Honolulu, I can buy pint, pita cola, I can, I can do what I want with it. Then what happens is the onig turns ayin, nun, gimel, turns into nun, gimel, ayin, to nega. So what we see here is that essentially everything Hashem wants to give us is always from one source. It's the way that it trickles down into this world where it gets mixed up and clogged along the, along the way that switches it and, 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 and somehow we perceive it and receive it distorted. It's like having a radio and you know that the, you know, it has to be, the, the antenna has to be facing this way. But, you know, I'm going to face it that way because, you know, sometimes it moves, whatever, it's more convenient for the curtain, whatever it is. And so I move the antenna and then I don't get the signal correctly. And I'm trying to switch the channel and switch it and switch it and do everything, and I still don't hear the radio reception properly. I have to be aligned. I have to be perfectly aimed at getting the right signal. And then Be'ezrat Hashem will be able to enjoy all the goodness and all the oneg that Hashem so badly wants to give us. What I really discover, what the real avoda of Elul is that essentially by discovering and letting go of all the negativity of my life, when I let go of it, I first of all start saying, you know what, maybe it wasn't such a bad thing, you know, that my husband didn't get that job. I mean, really, if I look at it, we still were able to pay the bills and we were still able to manage and he was more at home and he was more able to help me. We can start, when we start letting go of the negativity, we start opening up our minds and are, we're able to contemplate and see the goodness that lies in our lives. And there is goodness in every single one of our lives. We just need to clean off the glasses because life is perception. It's not about circumstance. One person could be going through so many difficulties and still walk around with a smile on their face. It's all about our choice. It says in the Torah, Hakol bidei shamayim chutz mi'irat shamayim. What does that mean? It means everything's in the hands of Hashem besides yirat shamayim. My choice, free will, on, in the most simplistic way to describe it, lies in one thing. How do I see Hashem through the circumstances of my life? Yirat shamayim, take the word yirat, and the root of it is lirot, to see. How do I see Hashem through the circumstances of my life? Because in essence, every single one of our lives are already pre predestined. They're already planned for us. Our choice is how am I going to interact and react to those circumstances of my life. My husband is the best husband for me. My children are the best children. My neighbors, my house, everything has been planned out perfectly in order to enable me to reach my ultimate soul's perfection. Because in essence, this world is all about one big span of life, 120 years of a nine to five job. This whole 120 years of ours is filled with work. 
and we're looking to go on vacation. Now, I didn't say we can't stop in between and have a little bit of a lunch break and enjoy a little bit of, you know, social talk with our coworkers. We're allowed to enjoy, we're supposed to enjoy, but we need to understand Adam la amol yulad. We are here to work. Our retirement plan is after 120. Death is part and parcel and a continuation of life, but in a different company, so to speak. You've just graduated and have been given a raise. You've been promoted. And so now you are in with the big guys in a different office with the big armchair and great leather, you know, council, everything, right? The private secretary and all. But that's after 120. We want pension now. We want imme immediate gratification now. We're here to work. We're here to serve our creator. We're here to serve through cre uh, serving our creator. We serve ourselves because we ultimately benefit from it. But we need to get our priorities straight. We need to understand what life is about. We've been given a gift to come back here after numerous reincarnations where we messed up. None of us are here new souls. We've all been here before. We've been invited to come back to fix what we messed up last time. I don't know how many times I've been back. We can do a raffle later. But basically, we're here to fix. And guess what? Why during this generation there's such intense fixing to do? Come on! I mean, I pulled out the wrench, I've used the tools. How much do I need to fix? Was I so bad last time around? But we have to understand that there's no more reincarnations. That's it. I was just at a shear yesterday with Rabbi Kessin, and I've heard this a few times. And he brings down that according to the calculations, we're not allowed to say exactly when Mashiach comes, but what we do know is definitely by the year of 6,000, that's it. We're done. I mean, there's not much going on here. 275 years, whatever, right? 225 years, sorry. Triata Meitim is going to span for a period of 210 years. What that leaves us is with 15 years, that within the next 15 years, we've got to have Mashiach, Gogu Magog, the beginning of Triata Meitim, within the next 15 years. Where that's it. We're at we're at the end of the end. And so Hashem says, I can't reincarnate you anymore. Don't you understand? There's no more coming back again. It's done. You've got to pay down the debts. And the Arizal brings down that if we do our tikkun, meaning if we accept with emuna shlema that everything is good, Everything's good because you love me, Hashem. You're my father. Of course everything's good. I may not see it, just like a kid doesn't see and doesn't understand everything a parent does. I trust in you, Hashem. You have a great track record. By the way, did I ever tell? You know, you did take us out of Mitzrayim, and you, know, you really did give Avram and Sarah a child when they were almost 100. I mean, you've done a lot of really great things. I'm sure you can do a lot of other good things. I have trust in you by looking back at the, prop the illogical prophecies do you know why Hashem says that Emunah is not logical? You know why? Because from the get-go, the way that Am Yisrael started was totally illogical. It was an out-of-world, unreasonable, I mean, having a child at 100 years old. It's, it's, it's like ridiculous to think about. That was the onset. That's what we're made of. That's what the Jewish nation is made out of, total Irrational. It can't be explained. Nobody can explain our existence. So you want to make sense of your life? You want to make sense of the way Hashem runs the world? You won't understand it because we're above logic. Emuna is, is right here. It's that aura that everyone, all the mystics love to talk about, the color of your halo and, you know, turns this color and that color. That's your Emuna right here. It's right there. That's the keter, that's the crown that we were given on Har Sinai. And every time that we go above and beyond our animalistic impulses, guess what? We reach up above ourselves, I'm gonna do something that's beyond my nature, that's against my nature, that's not really me, I'm gonna go beyond myself. What does it mean I'm gonna go beyond myself? I'm gonna extend my boundaries. I'm going up, I'm taking my amuna, which is my keter, and I'm placing it on my head. 
and I'm now anointed to be king over my life. That's what Amuna is. It means that I'm reaching above my logic, which is anyway not part of the Jewish history, and I decide to connect myself to something out of this world because I'm not made of something from this world. I belong to a different dimension. It doesn't make sense that I'm alive. And so all of this is happening at a very fast pace because Hashem says, listen, if I don't get you to wake up now, you're going to come and complain to me after 120 and say to me, but why? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you send me a telegram? I mean, you have so many angels, you couldn't send me a telegram with all the technology. Something? Or eat. you've been sleeping, come on, you've got to wake up. Something? Hashem knows we're going to come and complain to him if we don't wake up. And so everything is chesed. And that's so important to remember. And the only way we can come to Rosh Hashanah and say to Hashem, guess what, Hashem? I love you so much. I want you to continue to be my king. You know why? Because everything you've done for me in the past year has been fabulous. I'm sorry I complained. I'm lacking. I'm in a moon a moon of diapers, you know, stages. I'm working on it. Be patient. What is rachamim? Rachamim means I don't deserve another year of life. Tell Chemalai, have pity on me. I'm just, a, I'm just a, a spiritual person with a lot of cooking. Please just kind of wait until I clean up my act. Lo magieli klum. I'm not deserving of anything. But Hashem, you're my father. Avinu malkinu. First you're my avinu, then you're my malkinu. Hashem, have rachamim on me. That should be our tefillah. Our tefillah should be from this point until Rosh Hashanah, leading up to Yom Kippur. Hashem, rachem alai, have pity on me. I was, I had no dot. I lost, I lost my, my dot. I lost my knowledge. I, I forgot. I forgot that you're in my life. I forgot you're part of my life. I'm sorry, Hashem. Forgive me. I got a little bit above and beyond myself. I thought too highly of myself. I thought, well, you know, why didn't I make that? Why didn't I make that proper choice when I decided to invest in that house? I thought I was wiser than I, but I really, it's you. It's all you, Hashem, and guess what? I want you to continue to be my king because I loved the way my last year went. And I won't be it, but I, I'm going to be, we're all going to be x-rayed. So I have to work on being truthful to be able to say that before Rosh Hashanah. Because once Rosh Hashanah comes, that's it. We have all the preparation before the Yom Adin. Once Yom Adin comes, no more preparation. And so, Be'ezrat Hashem, that is the avoda that we need to be working on. This entire month to work up until Elul, yes? To work on anointing Hashem King over our lives. Okay, Hashem, I'll let you run this one. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. But you know what, Hashem? I'm stepping backwards. You're in charge. You're going to run my life, and I'm happy with it. So Be'ezrat Hashem, we should be matzliach to see Hashem in every flower, in every bug that crawls, crawls around, in every circumstances, in the yelling of our children, in the complaining of our neighbors. We should be able to see Hashem in everything. And through that, say to Hashem, I'm happy. I'm happy with the way you run my life. You do a great job. Two thumbs up. Give me another one just like that. Be'ezrat Hashem Barachamim. We should be able to see the Geula Shlema, dance B'Simcha, and really see the revealed good of everything. Be'karov B'Yameinu. Amen. And I'm looking forward to enjoying a wonderful new year. All of Am Yisrael. Amen.